Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. In this lesson, we're going to be going through exam papers one and two. From next week, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be more specific. Like, for example, I say, okay, fine. On Monday, we're going to go just through paper one algebraic type questions um, from old exam papers and then so on and so on. So from next week, we'll be a lot more specific about the type of questions that we're going to be going through. Um, but for today and for tomorrow, we're just going to keep going through exam paper questions as they come up from the different exams. So this is an old IB exam paper question from 2012, I think it is. Um, obviously, I only took the questions that belong to the current curriculum out of it. Um, and there's some very good exam paper questions. They've also got a slightly different way of thinking to the national curriculum, which is quite nice to practice, especially if you're getting a little bit bored with your current curriculum. Okay, so it says, given that f of x equals 1 plus 2 x, 2 to the x, show that f of x times f of negative x is equal to f of x plus f of negative x. So all that they are trying to do is basically make you realize, well, make sure that you understand that whenever you see an X here, you have to replace, um, well, if, so for example, if this is F of two, then X would be two. If, if, if this was F of three, then this would be three. So if F of X equals one plus two X, do you agree that F of negative X would be one plus two to the negative X? That's what that is, okay? By the way, the reason I'm telling you the exam paper that I'm doing is that it gives you an opportunity to go and download the paper if you wish to and try it for yourself and then obviously you can come and look here to see how you would do these questions. Okay, so let's carry on. So we've got f of x multiplied by f of negative x would be 1 plus 2 to the x multiplied by 1 minus, I mean, plus 2 to the negative x. Okay, so let's use FOIL. Let's just use basic FOIL. It's going to be 1 times 1 is 1, plus 1 times 2 to the negative x is 2 to the negative x, plus 1 times, uh, I mean, 2 to the x times 1 is 2 to the x, plus 2 to the x, multiplied by 2 to the negative x. Okay, so do you agree this becomes 1 plus 2 to the negative x plus 2 to the x? And then this one here is interesting because if you've got common bases, what can you do with your exponents? You can add them. So it becomes 2 to the x minus x. But x minus x is the same as 0. And anything to the 0 is 1. So therefore, this becomes 2 plus 2 to the negative x plus 2 to the x. Okay, so that there is the left-hand side, right? Now we need to see if we can get it to equal the right-hand side. So let's do the right-hand side over here. That is f of x plus f of negative x, which is going to be 1 plus 2 to the x plus 1 plus 2 to the negative x, so the same sec, which becomes 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 2 to the x plus 2 to the negative x. And amazingly, ta-da, we have just shown that f of x times f of negative x is equal to f of x plus f of negative x. Okay, so there we go. So that's quite a nice question. I like that question a lot because of the fact that it is different from what we normally see. And it, sometimes you need to challenge yourself a little bit and see if you can make sure that you can understand and do these questions that are slightly difficult and slightly tricky. Okay, so now let's look at question, the second part of this question. I'm just gonna erase all the ink. It says, if g of x is f of x minus one, determine g of negative 1 of x in the form of, so they're looking for the inverse of g. So do you agree that f of x equals 1 plus 2 to the x? Therefore, g of x is going to be 1 plus 2 to the x minus 1, which is just 2 to the x. So therefore, that is g of x. g of x is 2 to the x. So therefore, we can say that this is y is equal to 2 to the x. That we want the, we want the 
inverse, okay? So what do we do? We swap, we swap the x and y and we solve for y. That is how we get it. So if we swap x and y, we get x is equal to to the y. Okay, now we need to solve for it. So remember the way to do this is, and the way that I always remember it is 2 to 3 equals 8. That means that log 8 base 2 is equal to 3. That's just like a little example that I use to help me remember which way these things go. So therefore it is log... Uh, we need to solve for y here. So therefore it is log... I'm going to get there. x base 2 is equal to y log x base 2 is equal to y. And there you go. So there is the solution. So you needed to realize that you wanted to find the inverse. Okay, that was the minus 1. And how do you do it? You stop, stop x and y and then you solve for y. Right, let's do normal math. Things that you will definitely see in your final exam paper is determining f dash of x from first principles. In this case, they've given you a fairly decent one. They've asked you for, they've got f of x is equal to minus 2x squared. So the first principle formula goes f dash of x equals the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, so that is on your formula sheet. So that is great that that's on the formula sheet. But what you need to do is you need to now be able to substitute into this formula. So we need to first solve for f of x plus h. So f of x plus h is equal to, now wherever we see an x, we're now going to write x plus h. So it becomes minus 2 x plus h squared. So this becomes minus 2 x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, which becomes minus 2x squared minus 4xh minus 2h squared. Okay, so now we know that f of x plus h is minus 2x squared minus 4xh minus 2h squared. So now we can substitute that into this equation. So here we go. We've got limit as h tends to 0 of this big thing here, which is minus 2x squared minus 4xh minus 2h squared minus, now please remember your brackets, minus 2x squared, because if you don't remember your brackets, you're going to get the sum wrong, all over h. Okay, so now what are we going to do? We're going to go limit, and don't forget to write this, please. You cannot just drop the limit as h into 0. The whole point about this is that we are at some point going to make h equal so close to zero that we'll be able to cancel it out, but we cannot do that if we haven't written in that this is going to be equal to something specific as h tends to zero. So we've got minus 2x squared minus 4xh minus 2h squared minus times a minus is a plus 2x squared all over h. And now we can get quite excited because these cancel and we can take out a common factor of 2h. Do you agree? So you've got the limit as h tends to 0. We can take out a common factor of 2h. And we're left with minus 4x minus 2h all over h. So that cancels with that. Actually, it doesn't because what it does, but I'm an idiot, sorry, because I forgot that I'm dividing by 2. So do you agree that this becomes minus 2x minus h? There we go. Now I'm happy. Now I can use this. I'm saying 
what is this going to become as h tends to zero? Well, as h tends to zero, this h goes away. So what are we left with? We're left with 2 times minus 2x, which is just minus 4x. The final answer, the first derivative of f of x equals minus 2x squared is equal to minus 4x. Okay, right. Now we're going to do some interesting stuff. They've got, they want the derivative, but we can use the formula. So remember that f of x is equal to ax the n, f dashed of x is equal to a n x to the n minus 1. Okay, right. So now what are we doing? We need to apply this rule. But before we can do that, we need to get rid of these horrible thirds. Okay. And it says your exponents in your answer must be in positive values. But okay, so they're kind of giving you a hint that you need to change this to exponents. So what we're going to do, we're going to go y is equal to 3. This is the square root. And the square root is represented by half. So we're going to write it as x cubed to the half plus 4 over x to the half. We'll worry about that now. Minus 2 to the half, okay? Now we still can't f uh, differentiate this using the rule because we've got this bracket and this is at the bottom. So let's fix that. That becomes 3x to the 3 over 2 plus 4x to the minus a half minus 2 to the a half. Now we need to differentiate this, okay? So let's get going. How are we going to do this? Remember that we want dy by dx. And the rule is we take whatever this figure is, bring it to the front, and then subtract 1. So it becomes 3 multiplied by 3 over 2. That's a 2. x to the 3 over 2 minus 1 plus 4 multiplied by minus a half x to the minus a half minus one. And this dude here is a constant, so we can ignore it when we're differentiating. So therefore we become three times three is nine over two. X to the three over two minus one is the same as saying three over two minus two over two. So therefore this is just a half. Four times minus a half is minus two x to the minus 3 over 2. Okay, so we still aren't finished because they want your answer to have exponents must be in positive values. So we have to fix that. So it becomes 9 over 2 x to the half minus 2 over x to the 3 over 2. And that's it. You can, if you really want to, change this back to square roots, but they do say the exponents in your answer must be positive values. So they are expecting there to be exponents in your answer. Right, now, now we're getting to the proper use of, well not the proper, but the, use, the applied use of your differentiation. You've been given a graph which goes f of x is equal to x cubed plus 3x squared plus x plus 1. Okay. Now it says show that the tangent to the curve y equals f of x at the point where x equals minus 2 as y is equal to x plus 5. Okay. So what you've got is some random graph. Okay. It goes through positive 1. Okay. And it probably does something like that, something like that, where this is one, okay? Now they're saying that they want you to show that the tangent to this curve at the point where x equals minus two, I don't know, somewhere like here, is y is equal to x plus five. So they say that the tangent to this is going to look something like that, but obviously not quite because we've got that going through one and it needs to be going through five. So in fact, let me just erase the red. Like, oh, okay, and let me just draw this again. So it doesn't matter what it looks like. Okay, no, that's a little bit, okay. So let us draw it like this, and then like that, and up like that. 
And what they are saying is that they want us to show that the tangent at minus 2 goes through something like that. That that is more or less a tangent and it would have a equation of y is equal to x plus 5. So the first thing we need to do is find out what that point is. We know that the x value is minus 2. We need to find the y value. Um, yes, we do. So let's do that. So we're going to go f of minus 2 is equal to minus 2 cubed plus 3 times minus 2 squared plus minus 2 plus 1, which is going to be negative 8 plus 3 times 4 is 12 minus 2 minus 1. 12 minus 8 is 4. Okay, minus 2 is... Okay, so this is actually a positive value. That's interesting. Okay, so my graph is a little bit wrong in the sense that this... Okay, all I need to do is this. Watch, I'll show you. Um, it's going to look like... Is that right? Minus 2 cubed is minus, minus 8. Minus 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. That becomes minus... Two, oh, that's a plus 1. So this becomes 12 minus 8 is 4. Minus 1 is 3. Hmm. So therefore this graph is going to be going through 3. Okay, which means this graph drawing is totally wrong. Um, because in order for that to have a positive gradient at minus 2, 3, hmm. okay, fine, so let's not draw the graph. Okay, so what we're saying is that this point here is at minus 2, 3, okay, and it's going to have a positive gradient, but it goes through 1. It makes sense. And this is a turning point between minus 2 and 1. There might be. It might be a turning point between minus 2 and 1. Okay, so we know that it definitely is going through 1, and we know that it has a positive gradient at minus 2, 3. So if x it could be doing, yeah, in fact, it probably is doing something like that. So, sorry, I'm just trying to work out what it's doing. So at x equals minus 2, 3, minus 2, 3, it's got a positive gradient. And then it probably has a turning point that does this and then goes up like that. That's more like it. Okay, so that makes sense. And this is one, and then you'd have a gradient which would be going up like this, and it would show that that cuts at five. Yeah, that makes more sense. And that is minus two, three. Okay, now I'm happy. So that's kind of what your graph is going to look like. There, you don't have to draw the graph. I'm drawing the graph to try and give you a visual idea of what's going on. So now we know that that value there is minus 2, 3. Now we need to find the tangent at that point. Why? Because in order to find the equation of a straight line, we need to either have two points or we need to have the point and the gradient. And we've got the point, so now we need to find the gradient at that point. And we can do that by finding f dashed of x, because f dashed of x is the gradient of the slope. Okay, it's the gradient of the slope. It gives me, it gives me the equation of the slope at every point along here, okay? So that means it's going to equal 3x squared plus 6x plus 1. This is the equation of the gradient at any point. So now we're going to find the gradient at that point. So we're going to substitute in minus 2. So we get f dashed of minus 2 is 3 times minus 2 squared plus 6 times minus 2 plus 1. So it becomes 3 times 4 minus 12 plus 1. 
3 times 4 is 12 plus minus 12 is so it's just one yay and look we've just shown that the gradient is one yay so therefore we know that y is going to be 1x plus c okay i'm just making you understand that that's a one obviously i'm not going to write it every time now now what are we saying we're saying that we now need to find what c is so what are we going to do we're going to substitute in that point there which is why we had to find the value of that y value so we're going to go three is equal to one times minus c take it across we get three plus 2 is equal to c, so c is equal to 5. Therefore, my equation is y is equal to x plus 5. To ching, smiley face, I have got my marks. Right, question 2. It says determine the x coordinates of the point where this tangent intersects the curve again. So now we need to find where it intersects. So what are we going to do? We're actually going to let these two graphs actually equal each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to go x cubed plus 3x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to x plus 5. And we're going to get two points, at least two points. The first point is going to be where it just touched, which we said was minus 2. And then we're going to find a second point, which will be the point at which it has now crossed at least a second point. There might be a third one. So what do we got? We've got x cubed plus 3x squared plus x minus x, okay, plus 1 minus 5 equals 0. So do you agree with x cubed plus 3x squared? They cancel. Minus 4 equals zero. But we know that this will work. We know that if we substitute minus 2 in, we're going to get zero. Let's prove it. We've got minus 2 cubed, okay, plus 3 times minus 2 squared, minus 4. Minus 2 cubed is minus 8, plus 12 minus 4 is equal to zero. So we know, therefore, that x plus 2 is a factor. So I can divide this, I can divide, substitute x plus 2 into this, I can divide it into it using the factor theorem. That's effectively what we're doing now, is we're using the factor theorem. So we're saying, yes, it equals naught, but we're also saying it equals x plus 2 and then something. So how do we do this? We, sub, we divide the first into the first and we're left with x squared. We divide the last into the last and what do we get? We get minus um, 2. Okay, now this multiplied by this gives me 2x squared. Okay, and this multiplied by kx gives me plus kx squared and it all has to equal 3x squared. So what does k have to be? k is obviously 1. So therefore the middle term for this is going to be, wait for it, plus x. And now I need to factorize the second bracket. So we've got x plus 2 and then we've got x minus 1 x minus 1, actually that can't be right, it's x minus 2, x plus 1, x minus 2, x plus 1. So it becomes, wait, I'm going to tell you, oh, what color, oh, wrong color, x minus 2, x plus, x plus 2, x minus 1. Therefore, my solutions are x equals minus 2, or x equals plus 1. So the other place that this graph is going to intersect the curve is at x equals 1 and they only wanted the x coordinate you didn't have to work out the y value at all right nice questions there right now let's look at some finance let's look at some finance and we're starting off with poor old sarah well actually i don't know if it's she's poor sarah received a valuation for a car of 130,000 rand okay 
that had depreciated at a rate of 15% per annum on a reducing balance for the last five years. So if it's a reducing balance, you know that it's compound interest or compound depreciation, right? It says determine the value of the car five years ago. So what are we looking for? We're actually looking for the principal. Do you agree? The formula goes A is equal to P1. In this case, it's depreciation. So it's minus I n to the power, sorry, um, I'm going to get there, does anyone want to me raise? I need a purple. Minus i to the power of n, that is what you have now, okay? But you've been given the following information, you have the amount that you would get out now, which is 130,000. You have the i, it is 15%, but remember that it is um, with a decimal, so it's 0, 0,15. You have the N, which is five years, and it's compounded per annum, so that's great. You just have to use the five years. And what do we want? We want the principal. We want to know how much the car actually cost her. Right. So what are we going to do? The next thing we're going to do is substitute in. So we've got 130, 1, 2, 3 is equal to P1 minus 0, 0,15 all to the power of 5. Okay. So now, can we solve? Yes, we can. We can say that P is equal to 130, 1, 2, 3, divided by 1 minus 0, 0,15 to the power of 5. And we can get out our calculators. So let's just get out our calculator. I don't know why my calculator is not working. Let's just get it out. It's a bit slow. Here it is. Nope. Oh, and you know what? We don't need this anymore. Um, yeah, okay, thank you for sharing. <sighs> there we go. So let's get our cal calculator and let's put in the math. So we've got 130, 1, 2, 3, divided by bracket 1 minus 0 0.15, bracket to the power of 5. No, that didn't work to the power of 5 equals, and it becomes 292,987 and 25 cents. But then what did they say? They said round off to the nearest thousand, to the nearest thousand. So the nearest thousand is this two here. So we have to look at the hundreds column, and the hundreds columns is a nine. So we're going to round this up to 293,000. So the principal, hmm, so the principal, the amount of money we paid for this car was approximately 293,000 rand. Okay, right, let's move on. Emily saves 300 rand of her monthly salary in an account earning interest at 8.5% compounded monthly. Okay, so she saves 300 rand every month. So do you agree that's not an investment that is a once off? It is a continuous investment. Okay, so therefore we should be using the fact that X is 300. Okay, in an account earning interest, it is 8.5%, but we want to change it to decimal. So that becomes 0, 0,085, but it's earning compounded monthly. So we're going to divide that by 12. At the end of 10 years of working, so how many payments do we have? We've got 10 years times by 12 months in a year, which is 120. Emily stops making payments, but leaves the money in the account to continue earning interest. Calculate how much money Emily can expect to have in the account 20 years after she started her saving plan. So do you agree there's two things happening here? The one is basically a future value formula where we're finding out the amount that she will earn after her 
10 years, okay? And then the next is a compound interest formula because that amount is not being changed, okay? So for the next 10 years, it basically earns her money and she's not adding in, okay? So you could do it separately. You could say, okay, well, this amount is equal to 300, that's your X, times by 1 plus 0, 0, 0.85 over 12 to the power of 120 minus 1 all over 0, 0, 0.85 over 12. That's your future value formula. And then you could take this answer and multiply it by the compound interest, which is 1 plus 0, 0, 0.85 over 12 to the power of 120 and you'd get the total answer but we can do it in one by just multiplying this with 1 plus 0, 0, 0.85 over not the whole thing over just the end bit okay over 12 all to the power of 120 so that would give you the total amount this bit here is for the first 10 years and this bit here is when we take the amount we get out of the first 10 years and then just put it in the same saving plan, earning the same amount of interest, but we don't add anything. Okay, so we're going to work these out. Okay, and again, I'm going to show you on the calculator. So let's get going. First off, let's clear. Okay, so we need a couple of fractions. So let's go fraction. So we've got 300 multiplied by, and then another bracket, 1 plus fraction, fraction, 0 0.085, all over 12, close bracket, to the power of 120, move over, minus 1, close the bracket, all divided by a fraction of 0 0.085 all over 12. Dush, 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 dush. Okay, let's try again. Equals, so that's the first part, which is 56,441 Rand and 53 cents. That's how much she had after the 10 years, was this 56,441 Rand and 53 cents. Now she leaves it in the savings deposit, savings account, and she just allows it to accumulate this amount of interest. So we're going to take this answer and we're going to multiply it by 1 plus the fraction 0 0.085 all over 12. Then we're going to close the bracket and make it to the power of 120. Why? Because again, it is 10 years and 12 months in a year. And it equals 131,658 Rand and 16 cents. So you can see it's more than doubled just by leaving it there without adding any money into it. It's not bad, hey, for 300 Rand a month. Not bad at all. Okay, good. Let's move on. Okay, so Yerma started working at the same time as Emily. Okay, but she does a different thing. Okay, but does not have a savings fund for the first 10 years. Okay, she doesn't have. It says calculate how much Yerma needs to save each month if she is to have 130,000 available at the end of the next 10 years using the same interest rate at 8.5% per annum compounded monthly. So this time we want X, we want X. We know what the amount should be. It should be 130,000, okay? The interest rate is still 0, 0, 0.085 over 12. And the number of payments is still 120. And we want to know how much does she have to save per month. So we're going to substitute into the exact same formula. We've got x is multiplied by 1 plus 0, 0.085 
over 12 all to the power of 120 minus 1 all over 0, 0.085 over 12 and that equals 130,000. And now we need to solve for x, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is divide by this. So we're going to go x multiplied by, actually I'm just going to do it on the calculator. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide by the denominator. Okay, so let's get out the calculator. Okay, so we're going to go 130, 1, 2, 3, okay, 130,000 divided by bracket, just to make it easier to read, 0.085 all over 12. Okay, well actually when I'm dividing, I'm timesing, that's wrong, so let me just go back. I need to times, because when you divide, you tip in times. Um, so I'm actually divide times thing. So let's go back and multiply it. And then go back. And close my bracket and go equals. So that there is 920, okay? Now we need to divide by this bracket. So now we need to divide by bracket, bracket, 1 plus this fraction, 0 0.085, all over 12, move, close bracket, to the power of 120, move over, minus 1, no, delete, minus 1, close bracket, equals, and the correct answer is 690 and 98 cents. So she has to earn, she has to save 690 and 98 cents for the second, um, for the next 10 years in order for her to get the same amount of money or more or less the same amount of money out at the end of that second lot of 10 years. So it's quite a lot of money she has to save per month compared to 300 and notice that it's more than double. Now it says Emily paid 36,000 in total. We know that. Calculate how much Yerma paid in total. So she paid 698, 90 rand and 98 cents, right? But she paid that per month. So it is 690 rand and 98 cents times by 12 to get the per month times by 10 to get the years. So therefore that is going to be, and let's get out our calculator. So it's 690.98 multiplied by 120 equals um, 82,917 and 60 cents. 82,917 and 60 cents. And now we're told you have to be careful because here's the thing. They didn't ask you how much Yuma paid in total. They said how much more did Yuma pay? Calculate how much more Yuma paid. So what do we need to do? We need to subtract the 36,000 from this. We need to subtract 36,000 from this. And you get 6, 7, 1, 9, 12 minus 6 is 6, and 7 minus 3 is 4. So you get 46,917 and 60 cents. So Yerma had to pay an extra 46,917 and 60 cents in order to get the same benefit, okay, at the end. So what does this tell you? It tells you, grade 12, that the sooner you start a savings plan for... Um, retirement or anything else so even if you're saving up to go on holiday the sooner you start the less you have to save in the long run so that is some good advice right grade 12 that's it for today we are going to end off we will continue going through exam paper questions um tomorrow and like i said from next week we'll start doing specific exam paper questions on specific days have a great day